morning, guys. So basically, I want to sort of reset Hallmark Consistence. The way things have progressed over the years, I have unknowingly just moved away from what made me popular. Didn't know that I was heading in the wrong direction. And over the years, I've dealt with a lot of people. I enjoy dealing with the weekend gamer. The dad wanted to show you know, his kids the arcade and stuff he grew up on. And it transitioned to corporate builds and more corporate builds. That's why you don't really see a whole lot from me anymore because um, nine times out of ten, if you walk into a public place or see a really nice build in, in a gaming studio, it probably came from me. The other day, I had a, um, it's very rare, very, very, very rare, I had a dispute. And this guy had a dispute, and he gave me a list of his reasons why. And his arcade, he's like, I can't play PlayStation 2 with my arcade. I can't play Dreamcast with my arcade. I can't play Nintendo 64 with my arcade. Controls don't work. And I was thinking to myself, duh. But then it hit me. He should have known this beforehand. I should have made him aware. And then I started to think back on all the uh, machines, drives that are upstairs that have taken a back seat with good intentions. I had some here over a year. Well, almost a year. And that's not how I wanted things to be. It was never about the money. I mean, the only reason I started Home Arcade Systems was simply to help us uh, afford an adoption. And I really enjoyed helping people reach that goal. But I have customers that have been, I have 7,200 and something builds worldwide. 14,000 plus hard drive customers, and they have taken a back seat. I've always prided myself on support. I've always prided myself. I have customers now who, who've been with me years. Um, for example, I have one in Louisiana. He tries to call me every single day. He just ordered his, I think his second build, third build. And my intentions are so, I am definitely not avoiding him. Or anybody else who calls. I'm always on the phone. And my intention is to call them back. And as I go upstairs this morning, uh, yesterday, and I saw a machine up there that's been with me almost a year. Now, it, or, it did arrive here broken. And I did work out a lot of money to rebuild it for this customer. But it should have been shipped off over a month ago. I have customers who, Michael Evans, he's been with me. I think I built his machines. I built his brother's machines back in 2013, 14. He's almost here on a year. Why? Now I was, I did have a major backup due to like 200 something orders placed in one day updates but there's no reason anyone should have to wait that long so I'm resetting the way everything has transitioned and now customers take my priority I want to go back I enjoy dealing with customers I don't like dealing with project leads um, even though you can charge about five times more um, I don't like dealing with, they're always so naggy, man, it's very specific. And I feel that I've hurt my own reputation simply by um, being just blown up. Uh, 
They see 24 hours a day. And we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to go back literally to the way it was maybe 2016. But the mindset of customer first is there. My phone will be on. Um, phone numbers always listen to the website. You can call anytime during the day. Please don't call on the weekends. That's the only time I have. But for those Michael Evans, I've got Pablo in, in Canada. I've got I probably have 20 drives of customers that have uh, existing customers that need to go out. But for those who waited, I have a very special update that I continuously continuously add to and add to and add to with the whole goal of, hey, they're going to get this in the future. And then that turns into this and this turns into this. As I was going over my Git repository logs, I've been so busy the last year. I found features that would blow your freaking mind that I integrated, never documented, left in, and they're still there. Um, I am moving away entirely from Hyperspin. Hyperspin is a dead brand. Source code, I don't care which you've been told, has been dead, has been lost for years. It's built on a legacy framework. Bill did an amazing job on Hyperspin. I think he would have jumped on my offer to purchase it if it still existed a couple years ago, but it's obvious it doesn't. And I think the Launchbox community is probably one of the most positive, creative, and always evolving communities. It's, I am so glad Jason and I could not agree on a price back in the day for Launchbox because I really wanted to buy Launchbox because I never could have grown Launchbox the way he has. I never could have taken it to the level where it's at today. And I just have to applaud Jason for getting there. And it's that community that will put something out and it makes you think, oh wait, I can do this. Like there's several plugins I've either uh, decompiled or pulled the source from, added my own features like the YouTube downloader. I've added several features to that and it's never, never republished. Even though my whole intention was to republish it, it's just so busy. So we're going to go back. All side projects, all side projects are now gone, except for the ones I have with Monster Arcades, this new vertical style. I am eating the spaghetti on that thing. But all orders, all customer orders are taking a huge priority. I want everybody out of here. Even if you don't get some of the stuff that I really want you to get, you'll never know anyway. Um, and we're going to start doing very frequent videos, just like we used to. I've got videos on, I've got so many videos on my desktop with good intentions of just sharing with you guys um, shader modifications. Um, oh my gosh, there's some really good stuff. Oh man, I'll, I'm going to show a lot of this stuff off on that cabinet right there because I'm introducing some features I've just thought of that of the wild, and then I thought, hey, this is kind of a game changer. This is kind of awesome. So th there's a couple side projects I'm getting rid of entirely. This is one. Now, you have to be local to take advantage of this, but I get emails every single day about, hey, where can I get a good cabinet? Well, the truth is, unless you have one custom made, it's really hard-pressed to get a good cabinet. Um, you know, North Coast Customs, they've been around for long time for DIY kit unfortunately you know Wayne is gone now but in that same realm no one compares to a monster cabinet now if you have some skills I have a killer deal for you um, we'll go over that here in a minute stay away from any knockoff name brand so there's a I dealt with a customer here recently and I gave him a lot I mean, I mean a lot of attention. My support calls usually last five, ten minutes. I give less. I think I was on the phone with him almost six hours, and the first time I was on the phone with him for five hours because somebody has taken the North Coast name, just like they do my website, 
And they North Coast Arcades or something. Northwest Arcades. It's, it's a very similar domain rip. And truly pissed me off. He ordered a custom build from this guy. And I am not kidding you. This guy literally put together the cheapest machine he possibly could. Um, Forty dollar uh, Ryzen seven, fifty seven hundred G. Air cooled on a B four fifty motherboard. Why? Seriously, why? He had a DDR four um, twenty. I think it's 2400 megahertz RAM. Why? I mean, he had a 400 watt, $11 power supply in a $15 casing, charged less, almost 1500 bucks. So I told him, I said, dude, for what you got, file dispute. I'm going, you know, I've been charging flat rate fee since day one. So I don't use cheap parts. For less than that guy, I came in with a water-cooled Ryzen 7, 4,600 um, water-cooled memory, 750-watt power supply, NZXT case with uh, X570 motherboard, I mean, 14 terabyte Seagate Exos, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that don't know, and I feel that I have to get back on the road of helping people and not dealing with you know not putting these corporate projects in play so much um, while they they were really fun in the beginning it really took this guy Kevin who yeah it doesn't make much sense to help me realize I have really went off the rails uh, I lost all the priority that I've always put on the customer. The quality is there. However, I never document that anymore. I never show that off anymore. I never share that anymore. I want to. I just don't have the time. But we're going to make time. I just, I really liked the way it was prior to that. Not prior to my, I had two stress related heart attacks in 2017. That's why I stepped away. But we're not going that far. We're going, uh, we're going back to where you matter and you always have. But, you know, everyone will get the attention they need. Not, I will call this person back later and get so swamped at that. That has never been my MO. That's why you never, that's, people say, hey, do you have a Discord? Do you have a Patreon? Fudge no. Why would I put some a customer inside of a Patreon? I mean, a, uh, a crowded Discord where anybody can just answer their most random support question and lead you off into a trail of tears when I can guide you in the right direction immediately almost. Why the hell? Would you make a purchase and then go, hey, to join my Patreon. For my Patreon, you get this. Well, that's just some greedy, janky stuff. That's like not being able to come up with your own domain name or ripping off my site poorly. Very poorly. <laughs> um, like no skills poorly. Like you know, I've never seen a box of crayons poorly. So, um, I want to go over one side project now. If you're looking for a cabinet, if you're close here in the south, I'm a killer deal. I want to show you guys what I'm working on right now. So, this is the Monster Arcades Vertical, and we'll go over this later. I'm going to take this out of this funky little, uh, there we go. Cabinet here, this is running an iPad 4. Now, I tried, I tell you, this is something a little bit different. I mean, an Ultimate IO. I decided not to use Ultimark parts this time. I have found, I, in my personal opinion, I didn't have a choice. You got to use the Ultimark IO. But the GRS spinner, which is, uh, I don't have my glasses on right now. 
is right around here somewhere. It's probably, where is that spinner? It's right there. The GRS spinner is probably one of the best, most affordable arcade upgrades, additions you can add to your cabinet. This spinner, I think it's 30 bucks. Comes with left and mouse, right mouse. Also, it can spin vertical, horizontal with the click of a button. And if you tap down, it's a middle, a middle, um, sorry, a middle mouse click. The actual PCB controller is built within the spinner itself. You cannot even get close to that. Let me show you something. Um, here you go. It's a, almost a $30 knob. Just the knob for the spinner at Ultramar. That's the uh, GRS Tron Yoke. Absolutely amazing. Another $30 purchase you have to add. So these buttons I decided to float this time. Instead of going with the, um, like, Sanwas or... I've got a whole bunch over here. Um, I usually go with Sanwa or the Haps. This time I went with IL, and I've never really heard of IL when it comes to LED buttons, but these are really cool, yo, and they're affordable. I usually get everything from tmolding.com, and I tried to build this cabinet very affordably. I think these buttons are about a dollar, about two bucks a piece, and then you got your triggers, LED. So all in all, it's maybe, I think it's 250 a button. Uh, the... Whenever you're going with a cheap controller, joystick, the only cheap joystick you should ever use is a zippy. As the, the zippy is, has an adjustable tension, two, four, and eight way switchable. Unless you just wanna pay $10,000 for an oversized cabinet with a 50 cent joystick, then you know where to go. Um, I've tried to make this as high quality parts, affordable as possible, and it's going to display freaking amazing. So, all right, so guys, if you're looking for a cabinet, here's what we got. This is a, uh, this will fit a, up to a 50 inch, 50 inch, um, yeah, up to a 50 inch flat screen. Down there at the bottom, I've got, uh, I think it's 2 by 25 Kinter, standard Kinter amp. You got creative studio speakers. I mean, they're actually quite expensive. Um, a whole box of buttons. Now, I have already started the layout. Also, if you're running the latest Windows 11, you can have these Haller boards. These Haller boards work on Windows 11. This is an RGB LED four-player board with accelerometer and gyroscope. Gyroscope. <laughs> the, um, you see, I started doing the, the buttons yesterday, and I said, wait a second, I don't have time for this at all. I don't have time to even start this, complete this. Um, you got about 80 bucks of T-molding, enough to the entire cabinet, I've got the layout. Now, if you don't like the three, um, two, uh, yeah, player one is three. I mean, three by three. Players three and four are two by two. You have your spinner, your um, left and mouse click, whatever you want to put there. You also have the spot for your yoke. There are actually layouts under here for the uh, additional. You have your pinball buttons and your plunger if you need be. Um, you can also, I've got the drill tip to make these holes. You can have that. I've actually got a box of those drill tips. But here's the great part about this thing. Ready? You can have the HD marquee. So if you take a look up here, that HD marquee, I've already got it, see, see, I've already got it laid out to cut. So cutting along this line here, right here, to the 
back here, I will literally sit this flush with the entire cabinet. I've already sanded, I mean, I've already primed the cabinet. This is um, one inch heat treated birch. You're not gonna find that from anybody. With, uh, as soon, I think I've got, yeah, so the, yeah, so it's got wood prime. And then I was going to come over and just make my holes and then just sand it down and then buff it. But I went ahead and threw a, a layer of wrap on there for you just to show you what it looks like. Nice and pretty, glossy whenever it's done. You also have, it is floating around here, right here. <clears throat> this is probably propylene with a... Here's your controller board graphics for if you want that. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> but it is um, three fourths inch. Here, wait a minute. Three fourths inch polypropylene. Very, 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 very difficult to scratch. That covers the entire um, controller board. And for the top, I've got uh, chrome T molding. So if anyone's interested in that cabinet, you got to come pick it up. I mean, heck, the HD bezel alone is over a thousand bucks. But I'm thinking seven, eight hundred bucks. Um, that's what, about what I got in it, especially going down to Atlanta and picking it up near Atlanta. And I know you're only about a weekend away, not even a weekend. Drill your holes, sand it down. Mount your TV, and I don't think you can build that cabinet with those options for anything close to that. Oh, I've got a box of buttons, too. You can take the buttons. They're the cheapos that I bought just to show what the Dream Home comes with. Hey, you know what? 700 bucks, Dream Home. Want some, want some LED buttons? Seriously, no. They, um, I think there's enough buttons in there and ultralux buttons so yeah if you're anywhere near nashville it's a big cabinet it's a well-built cabinet if you see my last monster you'll definitely understand <coughs> so guys if you've got something here you're my number one priority if um if there's anything you want to see let me know because we are going to dig into um I'm actually doing a shader video today. I'm going to do some shaders this afternoon after I get all the shipping done. And we're going to do um, some enhancements I've added to the launch box. But I want to jump on this gung-ho. I think y'all deserve it. And customers deserve it. Plus, I really want to show off a lot of this work that gets... You know, a lot of people just go, hey, look at all the stuff I can add. Look at all the stuff I can't play because it's not compatible. Look at all the stuff I can add. Can't play it though. But I'm, I think I'm up now to 16 terabytes. I'm using um, several repack compression algorithms floating all across the board. That I think I'm right around 27 terabytes on this. Oh, 16 terabytes on a uh, 27 terabytes on a. 60. It's all instant load, no unzipping, and there's a lot of hidden stuff on there. I mean, a lot that I need to really document. I want to update the website where all this stuff's documented like I used to, and watch all the sites out there, copy it, and then not have it, but then make fake videos that they got it. It's, um, yeah. So guys, if you got something here, just feel free to give me a call. We'll talk about it. And I will do my best to assist everybody. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you soon. I don't know how to stop it.